Hello, I'm Dr. W. John Martin. By way of an introduction, I have medical boards in anatomic and clinical pathology, subspecialty qualifications in immunopathology and medical microbiology. In 1986, I embarked on a research program to look for viruses causing chronic brain illnesses. This research led to an understanding of a fascinating process whereby living organisms, including humans, can acquire free energy from the environment. I'd like to talk about this process. I refer to it as the third or the alternative cellular energy pathway, or more simply, the ACE, ACE pathway. The first energy pathway of nature is photosynthesis. Sunlight derived energy in conjunction with chlorophyll combines carbon dioxide and water to make sugar molecules. In the second energy pathway, food is metabolized along with oxygen to add phosphate to adenosine diphosphate to create the high energy molecule adenosine triphosphate, ATP. ATP is widely used as a source of chemical energy for the cell's activities. The third, or this alternative cellular energy pathway, is an inducible dynamic quality of the body's fluids. It results from the absorption of an environmental energy force called KELEA, K-E-L-E-A, referring to kinetic energy limiting electrostatic attraction. One way of explaining KELEA is to consider the hydrogen atom. It is a positively charged proton in a negatively charged orbiting electron. If that electron is displaced from the proton and let go, it would return rapidly by the electrostatic attraction to that proton. But it doesn't collide, rather it goes back into orbit. Returning back into orbit requires kinetic energy. In the case of water, its molecules are continually on-off hydrogen bonding with each other, but overall it consists of a rather cohesive fluid matrix. If those hydrogen bonds are limited or broken with Kalia, the water molecules become freer to move about. They become more dynamic. I know that because they show a greater tendency to be lost by evaporation. Regular water does not ordinarily absorb Kalia. Possibly the hydrogen bonding is masking the charges. Dipolar and multipolar chemical compounds do, however, have separated charges and they can absorb Kalia. Indeed, some can then transfer energy to nearby water, possibly in an oscillatory type manner. The body also makes Kalia absorbing molecules, which I call alternative cellular energy pigments, or again, more simply, ACE pigments. They can be identified by their fluorescence and by other energy converting activities. There's a clinical condition called Morgellons disease, characterized by the overproduction of ACE pigments. Now once water is activated, its separated charges can then directly absorb Kalia from the environment. This leads to further activation of the water. It can also be used to activate additional water. I'll talk about this in another video because of its relevance to homeopathy. Consuming activated water provides an approach to enhancing the ACE pathway. This is important because many medical conditions can now be explained simply as an insufficiency of cellular energy from the second or the food derived energy pathway. I put these conditions into four broad categories. The first, an inadequate delivery of oxygen, as in chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, COPD. The second is impaired blood supply, as in cardiovascular diseases. The third is inefficient metabolism, as in diabetes and possibly in aging. And the fourth, the increasing energy demands brought on by infections and by wound healing. 
Regarding infections, this work began by looking for viruses which cause chronic brain illnesses. I found those viruses. They are derivatives of regular viruses, but no longer able to be recognized by the cellular immune system. Consequently, they don't provoke an inflammatory reaction. I refer to this immune evasion mechanism as stealth adaptation. Stealth adapted viruses are particularly able to produce symptomatic illness by infecting the brain. I am confident that these viruses are the primary cause of autism, chronic fatigue, and contribute to many psychiatric and neurodegenerative illnesses. While the immune system is rather indifferent to these viruses, they can be suppressed by the alternative cellular, cellular energy pathway. I've therefore been working on ways of enhancing this third pathway as a treatment modality for these illnesses with gratifying results in a few children with autism. It's relatively easy to activate water. It's also easy to monitor the ACE pathway. The opportunity therefore exists to develop and optimize these protocols using the medical conditions I referred to earlier. For this reason, I want to encourage healthcare providers, patient volunteers and other supporters to get involved in a much broader endeavor of looking at the potential benefits of Kalia activated water in these medical conditions. I've included a lot of information in a recently published book naturally entitled Stealth Adapted Viruses, Alternative Cellular Energy, ACE, and Kalia Activated Water. I'm also interested in hearing from people, again, either wanting to participate in collaborative research in some of these clinical studies, or just to do their own independent research on this topic. I can be reached by email at wjohnmartin at ccid.org or by telephone call 626-616-2868. Thank you very much.